Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, I've got a really uh, crazy integral for you today. Um, it will be expressed as kind of a complicated uh, infinite sum, or at least an infinite sum will be used in it. Um, if any of you can take it further, definitely leave me a comment. But this is about as far as I was able to go with it. So, anyway, the first thing we'll do is note that this is equal to the real part of e to the i times pi x squared over 4. That should be no problem. e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. Take the real part of it and you just have cosine pi x squared over 4. Uh, no problem there. All right. So uh, next step is going to be to define a function in terms of t. Um, and our function is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared over x squared plus 1 dx. And we will note the following. That our function f of t evaluated that t is equal to 0 will just give us pi over 2. And if we evaluate f at negative i pi over 4 and take its real part, we get i. If we let t equal negative i pi over 4, we just end up with this. Taking the real part of it gives us i. That's our original integral, i. All right. So the next step is to utilize the Leibniz rule for deep, uh, differentiation under the integral sign to obtain f prime of t. Um, you use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign just by taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand and leaving the rest alone. So what you get is negative integral 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative t x squared over x squared plus 1 dx. And we can manipulate this a little bit like this. Um, we just place a parenthesis around that, um, that x squared and introduce a plus 1. That had the effect of subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared over x squared plus 1 dx, so we need to add it back uh, to preserve it. And now you'll notice that this right here is exactly equal to f of t, and um, this x squared plus 1 cancels with that, and you're left with uh, negative integral 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared dx. That's just a, um, a variation of the... Um, Gaussian integral, and it evaluates to negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. So all in all, we just have f prime of t is equal to f of t minus square root of pi over 2 t to the negative 1 half. Sorry. All right. Our next step is... Uh, to just basically rearrange um, what we had um, to give us f prime of t minus f of t is equal to negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. That's a differential equation that's fairly uh, easy to solve. Um, what we do is we multiply both sides of the equation by e to the negative t. And then we note that this expression right here is equivalent to the derivative with respect to t of f of t times e to the negative t. We use the product rule on that and we get f of t times the derivative of e to the negative t, that's right here, plus e to the, um, plus e to the negative t times the derivative of f of t, that's right there. So this expression is correct. And now we integrate both sides. So integrating gets rid of the derivative, and we're just left with this expression right here. All we did was integrate both sides. All right. Now what I do is I rewrite uh, this indefinite integral as a definite integral um, with t as our upper bound and some constant c as our lower bound. Um, I... That, that's equivalent to adding a plus c um, 
as your constant of integration because when you take this antiderivative, it doesn't have an elementary antiderivative, but you'll be evaluating it at some constant, so you'll just have a plus a constant. All right, so these expressions are equivalent. Next step, we utilize the fact that we, we know from above that f of 0 is equal to pi over 2. That implies that pi over 2 is equal to this expression evaluated at t is equal to 0. And we have that right here. We just replace this t with a 0. All right. So we have pi over 2 is equal to the square root of pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to c. You'll see that I switched the bounds of integration by getting rid of this negative sign right there. So this is what we have. All right. Now we utilize this known uh, integral right here uh, being equal to the square root of pi. Um, and we use that to determine that our c has got to be equal to infinity. Because if we plug in c is equal to infinity, we have this integral right here, which we know to be equal to the square root of pi. I'm not going to show that. Um, <clears throat> What you, all you need to do is, is make a substitution and you can get a constant multiple of the Gaussian integral. Um, that's, that's square root of pi. Um, and using that, we can infer that c is equal to infinity. All right, so now we know c, so we plug it back into our expression for f of t. Previously, we had f of t um, being equal to this thing. Uh, switch the bounds of integration, get rid of that negative sign, plug in c is equal to infinity, and we have f of t is equal to this. Okay, now we make a substitution x is equal to u squared, implying that dx is equal to 2u du. <laughs> uh, performing that substitution gives this. Uh, f of t is equal to the square root of pi times e to the t times the integral from the square root of t to infinity. Our bounds of integration, our u is actually the square root of x, so it's now uh, square root of t to infinity times e to the negative u squared du. And then I break that up using linearity. I take this integral going from square root of t to 0 plus the integral going from 0 to infinity. All right, so now we have f of t is equal to this thing over here. And you'll notice that this is known to, uh, to evaluate to square root of pi over 2. So we use that, and now we have this. f of t is equal to pi over 2 times e to the t. That comes, that comes from this. Minus... Again, I switched the bounds of integration, minus the square root of pi, e to the t, integral 0 to square root of t, of e to the negative u squared du. All right, and now we're going to use Taylor series. We know that e to the x is uh, equivalent to the sum from n going from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. That implies that e to the negative u squared is equal to this sum right here. All you do is replace this x with a negative u squared, and you get this. All right, so now we're going to plug that sum in to this integral and replace that e to the negative u squared. That's shown right here. All right, and then we are going to uh, switch the integration and summation notations um, and bring out everything that doesn't depend on u. And now we're just, now we have this. And this integral is very easy to evaluate. All you do is take the antiderivative and evaluate it at the bounds. So that's what we do in our next step. So now we have this. f of t, uh, you'll notice I factored out this e to the t. f of t is equal to pi over 2 minus this sum. you notice that uh, we, this antiderivative is u to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Um, and then you evaluate that. 
at, at the bounds. The upper bound is square root of t. Lower bound is zero, which which uh, goes away. So this is what we have now. Okay, so um, we know that I, previously, we know, or from above, we know that I is equal to the real part of our f of t evaluated at t is equal to negative I pi over 4. So if we plug in uh, t is equal to negative I pi over 4 into this expression right here, and take its real part, we get I, and that's expressed right here. You'll see all I did was replace um, all our t's with negative i pi over 4, and then took the real part of it. Okay, in this next step, um, what I did is I split this up into, um, I separated it. This is negative i times pi over 4, all raised to the n plus 1 half. So we have negative i raised to the n plus 1 half times pi over 4 raised to the n plus 1 half. I don't believe I did anything else in that step. So in the next step, um, what I did is I expressed negative i as e to the i pi over 2. It, it's that That's what it is. Negative i is e to the i pi over 2. It It's also, there. there's other values uh, for negative i also, but we're going to use the principal value, which is e to the negative i pi over 2. When manipulating these things, you generally use the principal value, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so now, now we have this. Again, I just replaced negative i with e to the i pi over 2, um, and that is all raised to the n plus 1, or yeah, n plus 1 half power. So we use the properties of exponents, and we just end up with this. And you'll also notice um, I got rid of this plus 1 half right here and just brought it outside. Um, pi over 4 to the 1 half power is square root of pi over 2. I multiplied that by square root of pi, and you just end up with pi over 2. All right. The next step, you can see I expressed e to the negative i pi over 4 in rectangular form. That's, uh, that's square root of 2 over 2 minus i square root of 2 over 2. And then I used Euler's formula on this, to write that as cosine of the argument. Now the argument is actually negative um, pi over 2 n plus 1 half, but since cosine is an even function, we don't need that negative sign. And then I did the same over here and distributed the negative sign outside since sine is an odd function. And I believe that's all I did there. Okay, now the next part, um, what I did is I factored out this square root of 2 over 2, and I also factored out this pi over 2, giving us pi square root of 2 over 4. And you'll see right here we're just left with 1 minus i, and right here we're just left with 1 minus this sum. So that's where we are right now, and um, I think we're, we're pretty much done. Yeah. Um, now, taking the real part of this is fairly trivial. We just multiply this in against this, this cosine angle minus I sine angle. We multiply that by 1 minus I, and then we take its real part. So we're only considering the parts that, when multiplied together, together give us a real part. That's going to be this 1 multiplied by this. And that's going to be this negative i multiplied by this. So this is what we end up with. And that is as far as I got. Um, I think that's that's pretty good. I, I researched that integral on the uh, on the internet pretty extensively. Um, I don't believe you can you can go much further than this. Um, but why this is a good representation is, is because this, this n factorial 
uh, in combination with this 2n plus 1 is going to cause this sum to converge very, very, very quickly. So um, you take 5 or 6, um, take, go ahead and take 5 or 6 uh, terms of this, and you have uh, something very, very close to the true answer to, let's go all the way back up, Wow, that was a long problem to this. But um, I think the most interesting thing really to come out of this video was not actually the answer to this integral. It's actually this formula that we derived. Um, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared over x squared plus 1 dx is, is equal to this. And we can use this formula to find, say, for instance, um, the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine tx squared or sine tx squared um, by uh, taking real and imaginary parts of this thing. Um, so that, that's a kind of a useful formula right here. Um, and I, like I said, I actually think that's the best thing to come out of this video. But anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.